Respiratory system in humans, it consists of the following organs which are meant for breathing that is nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea which is also referred to as the windpipe followed by bronchia and lungs. We have a picture here which depicts the respiratory system with all the labels labeled clearly. There is the nasal cavity that is in the nose followed by pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, which uh, then when it enters the lungs, uh, redivides into bronchioles and the lungs themselves. Now, here we have investigation one, wherein you have to show that carbon dioxide is given out during breathing. What you are required to do here is to take a beaker with lime water in it and you breathe out into the beaker that is you exhale into the beaker you would notice that the lime water will then turn milky because of co2 because when we exhale we expel out carbon dioxide and we inhale oxygen so this is what uh, is the proof the lime water turn turning milky is the proof that we indeed exhale carbon dioxide Second investigation is to breathe out some air on a clean mirror and you would notice that it turns cloudy and it might even have tiny water droplets. So again, it is because of the air that we have expelled out on the clean mirror because of which it turns cloudy and uh, in the process it also has tiny water droplets. Now respiration, respiration uh, it begins with the nose when a person breathes in the air passes through the respiratory tract which begins from the nose. Now in the nose all of us have hair which trap and stop harmful particles from entering our body. They also help in warming up the air that we inhale. The air now goes down the windpipe, also referred to as trachea, and then through two smaller tubes called bronchi, each of them enter into the two lungs that we have. Lungs are large soft organs. Each bronchus, then the bronchi, which is divided into two and enter the lungs, further is divided each uh, the bronchi is the plural uh, singular is the bronchus the bronchi divides and redivides into finer tubes which are called as bronchioles and they then end up into air sacs which are referred to as alveoli alveoli are very uh, they are air sacs whose walls are very very thin they are supplied with blood capillaries Air here is received from the bronchi and the useful gases are used up and waste gases are forced out which finally allows for the exchange of gases. So respiration is actually the exchange of gases in the lungs and in order for exchange to happen do you notice that from the nose it has to pass through various organs which collectively make up the respiratory system. And hence, this final exchange of air takes place in the lungs, in the alveoli, which are supplied with blood capillaries. That is, the blood now contains the useful gases. And they pass through the uh, entire body. And uh, then there is something called as oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood, wherein uh, pure blood, that is oxygenated blood, carries uh, the useful things in it substances in it and the deoxygenated blood brings in the waste products which are then thrown out of the body. In this case, uh, the waste products or the waste gases are forced out through exhalation. Now, how does air move in and out of lungs? We have a picture wherein all the activities that take place during, during inhalation and exhalation 
are depicted beautifully. If we talk about inhalation, when we inhale air, the lung capacity or the chest cavity, it increases because the rib cage expands and the rib muscles contract. Here, the diaphragm, it contracts, that is, it moves down. So, this is the process of inhalation in comparison to exhalation when we are exhaling the air out the rib cage becomes smaller the rib muscles relax and the diaphragm relaxes that is it moves up and the air is exhaled out through the nose air moves in and out of lungs lungs are present in the chest cavity and they and the ribs surround this cavity. The rib cage surround this cavity in order to provide protection to the lungs and other parts, other organs. Diaphragm is a large flat muscle which forms the floor of the chest cavity. Now, as we talked about uh, inhalation and exhalation in the previous picture, let's reiterate the uh, activities which take place during these two processes. Again, in inhalation, the ribs move out, diaphragm moves down, and the chest uh, the, and the chest cavity enlarges. That is, the air rushes in, inflating the lungs in the process. Whereas in exhalation, the ribs move downwards and inwards, and the diaphragm moves up. Here. The chest uh, cavity is reduced, air rushes out and the lungs end up deflating. So these are the activities which keep taking place so very frequently in our bodies when we breathe in and breathe out. And many of us do not even think about such process because we do a lot of activities without even giving them any thought. So we must understand and appreciate how our bodies are formed making us capable of doing so many activities or um, functions very smoothly with uh, synchronization. Now we have another investigation which is to show that diaphragm helps in breathing. If we remember diaphragm forms the floor of the chest cavity. For this investigation you are required to have two bell jars which represent the chest cavity and Y tubes because they act as trachea and bronchi along with balloons which act as lungs and a sheath which acts as a diaphragm or a floor of the lung cavity which is again represented by the bell jars. Ensure that they are closed with a cork and the cork has a hole so that the Y tube can be inserted. Now, if we see during inspiration or inhalation, when the air is breathed in, the volume of the lungs increases, the pressure decreases, and the diaphragm moves in the way it has been depicted in the picture. In comparison to the time when there is exhalation where the balloon's volume decreases, the pressure increases and the diaphragm is the way it is indicated. So this indeed shows that diaphragm is very important because it helps in breathing. Of course, all the organs in a respiratory system are important but this investigation specifically focuses only and only on diaphragm. Of course, in the process, it also shows how the lungs inflate and deflate as per inhalation and exhalation. Now, we talk about the blood, its role in respiration. What does it do? Well, blood, as we all know, is red in color. And why is it red? Because it has the presence of red colored pigment, referred to as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, it carries oxygen as oxyhemoglobin. It acts as a respiratory carrier. That is, it carries oxygen to all the cells of a body. And we know that in our, in our bodies, there are millions and millions of cells which all require this oxygen. So for this oxygen to be able to reach to all the cells, it is hemoglobin which helps and it in the form of oxyhemoglobin carries this oxygen. 
Oxygen now diffuses into cells as blood passes through tissues and tissues are groups of cells. Blood also collects carbon dioxide from tissues. This forms carbamino hemoglobin and it is this that is breathed out through the nose. So when we talk about taking in oxygen, the hemoglobin acts as he oxyhemoglobin, thereby passing oxygen to all the cells. And when we exhale, we exhale carbon dioxide. This happens in the form of carb amino hemoglobin and then is expelled out of our body. Now, there's something called as tidal volume. Well, what does it mean? It only means that in a single stroke, there is certain volume of air that either goes in or goes out. That is what is tidal volume. In a human being, it is about 500 ml. That much air is taken in or thrown out in a single stroke. Gaseous exchange in the body. Here, we have a picture of an alveoli which shows capillary network. All right, that is we talked about alveoli which is a air sac and it has capillaries around it. So um, it shows the internal respiration wherein gas exchange in capillary beds throughout body tissues is shown. It shows how in a body cell O2 diffuses into body cells and CO2 diffuses into blood. It shows the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. In the second picture, we have external respiration wherein gas exchange in lungs is depicted where there is alveolus, red blood cells, capillary. Here it shows how CO2 diffuses from blood plasma into alveolus and O2 binds, in, binds to hemoglobin in red blood cells and it acts as oxyhemoglobin as we have discussed. So this picture clearly explains the formation of oxyglobin and carb amino hemoglobin and in simpler terms exchange of O2 and CO2 that is oxygen and carbon dioxide. When we inhale and exhale along with pictures of internal respiration and external respiration. Now here we have different parts of the respiratory system. Um, it says that the nose inhales air, pharynx is throat, larynx is the voice box, it contains vocal cords, trachea is the windpipe, bronchia that is trachea splits into two tubes, lungs which contain alveoli that is air sacs, and alveoli is the place where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. In the picture, we have different parts clearly labeled for you to understand. I would request you to look at it carefully and try to understand, to memorize which part is what uh, so that it's easy for you to be able to draw label diagrams as well as to understand the process of respiration, the role of every organ in the process of respiration in humans. Now, how does the air pass through? That is the pathways of air during respiration. Air enters in our bodies through the nose, goes to the pharynx, ultimately reaching the trachea, which then divides into bronchiae. bronchiae enter lungs and in the lungs there are alveoli finally exchange of gases takes place here so this flow chart makes it quite easy for all of you to understand the pathway of air in the respiratory system of humans now when we talk about respiration certain diseases quickly come to our mind because they are respiratory diseases that is diseases which are related to the respiratory organ of humans these cause problems in the normal process of respiration that affect the air passages including the nasal passage the bronchi and the lungs well 
it's not necessary that every disease will affect all of these organs. One disease could even affect only just one organ and end up troubling a person. So there are two kinds of respiratory diseases, short term as well as long term. When we talk about short term, they are acute infections and under these we have pneumonia and bronchitis. Now what is pneumonia you might ask? Well, it is an infection of either one or both lungs. The main symptoms of pneumonia include fever, chills and heavy cough. Whereas bronchitis, as the name suggests, is an infection of main airways of the lungs referred to as bronchi. Here the main symptoms include cough and in this process it might even bring up mucus which is yellow grayish in color. The long term chronic infections, the long term respiratory diseases or chronic infections include asthma as well as tuberculosis. Asthma is very uh, common. It affects airways. It also causes wheezing, coughing, chest tightness and it leads to trouble in breathing. Here, the person who has asthmatic uh, attack actually gasps for air. And tuberculosis is bacterial infection which spreads through inhaling droplets from an infected person's cough or sneeze. So, these are the long-term diseases or the respiratory diseases that we have talked about. We have briefly touched upon pneumonia, bronchitis, asthma and tuberculosis. Certain other processes, for instance, um, we talked about breathing, we talked about cellular respiration, we talked about uh, combustion, we even talked about the respiratory system of humans. We discussed upon, about uh, aerobic and anaerobic respiration as well. So it was a very detailed discussion here in this chapter. So it will take you some time to be able to understand and differentiate between various uh, concepts that we've touched upon. So for you to be able to answer the questions that we will touch upon, I would request you to revise the topic thoroughly.